Hey, I'm Blake Palmer. I'm a hydraulic engineer at Volker, and today I want to talk to you about 1D hydraulic modeling in head grass. Specifically, I'm going to show you some different ways to use in ineffective flow areas in your model. We'll look at the multiple blocks method, we'll look at the normal method, and then I'll also show you how to add a levy to an existing cross section. But before we look at that, let's think about our objective as hydraulic modelers. So what we're trying to do is simulate real world flood conditions with a computer model. In the real world, water flows in all directions, right? It may flow left, right, up or down, but in a model, specifically a 1D model, it's flowing in one direction. That's why we call it a 1D model. So in order for a 1D model to be helpful, we have to give the model some information to inform it of where flood waters are likely to flow and not flow. So one way of doing that is with ineffective flow areas. And an ineffective flow area is just an area of the cross section that stores water but it doesn't convey the flow of water. In other words, it's an area that's, that's flooded but the flow velocities are so slow that it's negligible. So to demonstrate, uh, I'm going to go to a model that's already been developed. Uh, we'll go to the geometric data editor and navigate to the cross sections. Uh, I had navigated to this cross section previously, so it went there automatically. Um, so this is that cross section. Uh, as you can see, there are one, two, three ineffective areas and the way we identify that is the hatched area below the water surface. So this is the water surface line and below that line you've got these ineffective areas. So there's there's separate areas. So this is an example of the multiple blocks method and to enter that you go to options and effective flow areas and the window is hidden so I gotta drag it gotta drag it up so you can see Okay, so this is the multiple blocks method. So there's two methods. The person that developed this used the multiple blocks method. So these three rows, each row is associated with each one of these areas. So this first row is going to be the block on the left. The second row is that middle block. And the third row is that block on the right. The user has to enter a starting station, an ending station, and an elevation and then it has to tell the model is this ineffective flow area permanent or not permanent so the difference between that let me make this window a little bigger so you can see and then see if I can get this back up okay so if this were not permanent let's just make these an ends so let's say no not permanent You can't tell because the elevation is set like right at the water surface. So let me drop this. So let's drop this one down to say 328. Too low. Way too low. So what it does for a non-permanent ineffective flow area, when a water gets above the elevation that you assign, it treats this area as fully effective. So it's ineffective all the way up to this elevation and when it overtops that elevation, it treats the whole area as fully effective. But if you say that it is See, it just treats everything below the elevation that you assign as ineffective and everything above that is effective. So that's the multiple blocks method. The method that's more common, I wish that whenever I click on this, it would just pop right up there. I think the screen recorder may be causing it to glitch, but one way to do it is to just use the normal method. So. I'm just going to copy some of these stations and paste it into the normal method. So the normal method just assigns an ineffective flow area for each overbank basically. So first I'm going to take 
this block. So this is the starting elevation. This is the second, uh, or the starting station rather, and this is the ending station of that. I'm gonna go Control C, and I'm just gonna paste it. Control V. What's the elevation? 232.85. And then the second block begins at 1749, Control C, Control V, and the elevation 231.2. And I want these to be permanent. And when I click OK, it's going to update everything after I hit apply. Okay, so. I've got ineffective flow areas defined. What do I see? So this high ground, I know from looking at this site. So these these cross sections going from right to left. So this is the upstream side. Water's flowing down and to the left on my screen. So when you look to the right, everything when you're in Hikaraz, when you look at a cross section, you're you're looking downstream. So everything to the right over here is this right side of this cross section. And I know that this little tributary has a little levee that splits flow and causes the water on this side of the floodplain to go into a drainage basin that's analyzed separately in this study. So I don't want to consider this area to be conveying flow. I don't even want it to store water. So one note is, so for an ineffective flow area, we've already said that it doesn't convey flow. What it does do is it stores water. I don't want to store water over there. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a levee to this point. You don't have to click on the point to add a levee. I just wanted to see what the station and elevation was because I'm going to use that same station and elevation to assign my levee criteria. So you go to options, click on levees. Uh, and I'm in the right of bank, so I'm going to use the right hand side of this dialog box to enter this 3520.2 elevation 232.4. Okay, and it's going to put a levy right there whenever I click apply. And see that now it's blocked off from, from storing water, certainly is not conveying any flow. So that's how you use ineffective flow areas and levees. I know this was a simple video, but hopefully it'll help someone out there. Also guys, one other note about HICRAS. Um, don't forget to save your changes. Anytime you make an update, HICRAS will not save your work automatically. So to avoid losing work, always hit save before you close out your computer. Thanks guys.